Hi, I'm Maris, and in this video, I'm going to be talking to you about three different lab values, creatinine, blood urea nitrogen, or BUN, and glomerular filtration rate. I'm going to be following along using our lab values flashcards. These are available on our website, levelupRN.com, if you want to grab a set for yourself. Or if you are more of a fan of digital products, I would invite you to check out Flashables, the digital version of all of our flashcards available on demand and at your fingertips wherever you are. All right, let's go ahead and get started. So first up, let's talk about creatinine. Creatinine is a byproduct that is, a, it's a waste product created from breakdown of muscle tissue in the body. Uh, and it's really important because this is something that gets filtered out by the kidneys. Um, the expected range here is going to be 0.6 to 1.2 milligrams per deciliter. And luckily we do have a cool chicken hint here to help you remember that, which is that creatinine, or for this purpose, creatinine, will help you to remember that zero 0.9 is in the middle of the expected range. So uh, just something to help you remember that. But just think again, this is this is just a normal waste product that our body is constantly having to filter out. So I do expect there to be some, I just don't expect there to be tons. Now, the other uh, kind of waste product that I want to talk to you about is BUN, or blood urea nitrogen. So when we talk about BUN, this is a nitrogenous waste product um, that is produced when protein is broken down in the body. And again, this is just a normal waste product that we expect our kidneys are going to be able to handle filtering out uh, as part of our daily metabolic processes. The expected range here is going to be 10 to 20 milligrams per deciliter. And luckily we do have a cool chicken hint for you here as well. There are 10 to 20 hamburger buns in a package. Or I always think if I was having a cookout, I would want there to be about 10 to 20 hamburger buns to feed the people that I would invite. Now, let's talk about some reasons that we might have elevated uh, ranges here. So the big one is going to be kidney dysfunction. Uh, any kind of kidney dysfunction is going to cause us to have difficulty filtering out uh, waste products from our blood. Um, some, some more specific ones though to give you would be kidney disease, dehydration, or any sort of condition that is going to decrease blood flow to the kidneys. Um, so things here would be like an acute kidney injury, an AKI, or shock, where with shock we have massive vasodilation very often and that causes decreased blood flow to the kidneys. Uh, and then this can in turn lead to difficulty filtering out those waste products. So those are some possible causes of elevation uh, for these levels. But one thing I really wanna point out to you is that creatinine is more specific to kidney function than BUN. So when we see that, that creatinine changing um, and maybe not the BUN quite as much that can give us some information that, hey, really hone in here. This is something that's going on with your patient's kidneys. One of the things that I do want to point out to you, though, is that um, uh, patients who receive hemodialysis, meaning that they go in to have their blood filtered through a machine uh, several times a week because they have kidney problems already, well, we expect that they're going to have elevated creatinine compared to just a random person off the street, uh, you know, that does not have a kidney issue like that. They're already going to have elevation in their creatinine and their BUN. But if they miss an appointment, they will have even higher elevation. But I just want to point out to you that um, it is kind of expected that your patients who have kidney dysfunction already are going to have elevations in their creat at baseline. Now I want to talk to you about something called the glomerular filtration rate. You may also hear this called the estimated glomerular filtration rate, and you may hear this uh, referred to as the GFR or EGFR. This is just a calculation that is done. It involves using your patient's age and sex assigned at birth, um, and, and there's just a calculation that is done uh, based on some other lab values, and, and it gives us a, an estimated rate that the glomeruli of the kidney are filtering your blood. So we, we report this out as um, sort of an ML per minute. How much volume is being filtered by the kidneys per minute? 
Uh, and the expected range here is greater than 90 mLs per minute. This is one of those ones that I really just keep in my head that I'm looking to be 90 or above. Um, and that is really important. How well are my kidneys working? Well, I can tell you how quickly they're filtering blood. There is one really important thing that I wanna point out to you here, which is that previously, the calculation for um, figuring out the GFR was also using your patient's race. And this was something that we were factoring in whether your patient was black or non-black. And this is a really big issue. Um, this is not health equity, this is not health justice, and this is not accurate to, to the lived experience of these patients. There used to be belief that a, a black patient's kidneys functioned differently than non-black patients. And this led to patients not being diagnosed with kidney dysfunction who were black until it was much later in the chain of uh, chronic kidney disease, you know, until we're much farther down in the stages. And this is really important because this meant that patients were not receiving the care that they should have been getting that their non-Black counterparts were receiving. In 2021, um, the National Kidney Foundation and American Society of Nephrologists made a recommendation that we should remove race from the EGFR calculation. And this is really, really important. This is absolutely the correct thing to do. The reason I'm mentioning this to you is that, as we know, it takes time for recommendations from bodies such as these to filter down into the, uh, the clinical world, you know, at the hospital level, at the doctor's office, the lab laboratory, whatever, and furthermore, for that to reach students in, in school preparing to be nurses. So a couple of things that I want to point out to you here about this is that the recommendation was made in 2021. It took like several years for my hospital to remove race from the GFR calculation. Again, this is just because of bureaucracy and how much time it takes for these things to be vetted. But if you are watching this video right now and thinking, I'm pretty sure that the doctor's office I work for or the hospital for which I work, uh, they still use race to calculate GFR. I would strongly encourage you to use your nursing advocacy to say, hey, this is not best practice and, and we need to become uh, current with the evidence-based practice so that we can do the best we can for all of our patients and not have this disparity that leaves to us leaving black patients receiving care for kidney chronic kidney disease much later than their non-black counterparts. So that's just something that I really, really want to point out to you there. When we talk about derangement in the GFR, you know, somebody who has different lower levels of their GFR, uh, this is used to calculate the stage of chronic kidney disease that they may be experiencing. This is way more information than you likely need. However, if you are interested in it, we do have it here in the flashcard you can refer back to. But the point that I wanna get across to you is that as that number drops, the, the stage rises. So we get below 90 and, and we start comparing and we see that as it drops, the stage increases. So the lower that filtration rate, the worse off my kidneys are. Very, very important information to give to your chronic kidney disease patients to let them know why we are looking at this value and why we care about it so much. All right, I'm so glad you stayed until the end because I'm gonna test your knowledge of key facts provided in this video with some quiz questions. When caring for a patient who has missed their last hemodialysis appointment, how should the nurse expect their creatinine to be affected? It will be elevated. How should race be factored in when calculating GFR? Race should not be included as part of the GFR calculation. All right, that is it for this video. I do hope you learned something. If you did, would you leave us a comment and let us know what? We really like to see that stuff. It makes our day. And hey, if you have a great way of remembering something that I didn't mention, I'd love it if you would leave that as a comment too. We like to see it, but it's beneficial to other learners as well. All right, 
I'll see you in the next one. Thanks so much and happy studying. We invite you to subscribe to our channel and share a link with your classmates and friends in nursing school. And if you found value in this video, be sure to hit that like button and let us know what you found to be particularly helpful.